Hey guys, Fear880, and welcome to part two of my 2012 Jeep Wrangler Pentastar ticking issue with the V6 engine. So, basically, after I posted my part one video onto Jeep's Facebook page, they didn't like that too well. I had to do it a couple of times, too, to get their attention. I was contacted by private messaging by a couple of people from Jeep, and then eventually I was contacted by Alex at the Chrysler Corporation in Michigan. Alex went ahead and set up a schedule with my local uh, Jeep dealership, Big O Dodge in Greenville, to have the engine looked at. Also, the cool part about it was they offered to pay for a rental car because they expected the time period to be about a week's worth of time in the shop. I should have took the rental car, but I didn't because I've got the Mustang. And I figured, hey, I, and I asked them, I said, would y'all be willing to reimburse me for the Mustang? And they said, well, we really can't do it, but we'll cover your fuel, and maybe we can give you a few service things or something, and we'll do our best to do what we can do. Eh, I didn't hold my breath for that one. The Jeep went into the dealership, and I had immediately a problem with them acknowledging that there was a ticking. So I made sure the shop foreman came out and made sure he heard the noise that I heard and he acknowledged it. So the Jeep went into the shop and I was contacted on a regular basis by Anna, my service advisor, and she kept me in loop and also I was in constant contact with Alex from Chrysler. And what they acknowledged was, yes, there is a ticking issue and that they were going to go ahead and fix, I guess there were two open recalls in the Jeep. And they were going to go ahead and replace the um, rocker arms and hydraulic lifters. That I found out on Friday. I went ahead and told Alex, I said, hey, listen, that's fine and dandy, but that does not fix the problem. I don't think there's any documentation on any of the Google websites, the Jeep forums, the JK forums, the Wrangler forums, even on the Challenger forums. No one has had their lifters and rocker arms replaced and it's fixed the problem. This is Chrysler's protocol, how they first take their steps. I think that was the first thing they did to kind of buy some time when the head issue first came about. And that all that does is waste time and money on them. And it's also a cluster for all, so, because, forget it, let me keep going. I don't want to get into a rampage. Anyways. Well, Anna goes on vacation the next following week, and I don't hear from anybody until Wednesday. Tuesday evening, I'm a little concerned, so I call up to Big O Dodge. No one knows anything what's going on. Finally, Alex from Chrysler gets a hold of me on Wednesday. Hey, I'm sorry. The service manager at Big O Dodge was supposed to get in touch with you, blah, 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 blah. We're going to go ahead and have to order the parts. It's going to take a week or so for them to come in. And I'm sorry, but that's they're going to go ahead and replace the tappets and stuff. So I, I basically asked him, I said, listen, would you please look into it a little further? I said, listen, you work for Chrysler. You have all this information in front of you. Don't play stupid on this because y'all know a lot more about this head issue than the, than the uh, owners of these vehicles. So this is right where this magic extended warranty thing just came about so he says well yes we realized that this we'll go ahead and I'll go ahead and approve the approve them to tear your head down and take it off and measure it and all this kind of crap so they did all this and they realized that oh there's nothing wrong with your head because of this delay of diagnosing your head per your wishes there's going to be an extra delay in a third week for your vehicle. I'm like, whatever, fine. According to Anna, before she went on vacation, the parts were supposed to have already been ordered. So, week three, on a Monday, I decide to stop off at Big O Dodge as a surprise visit. I want to see what, I want to see my Jeep in pieces. Ooh, I'm sorry, Mr. Cody, but your Jeep's ready to go. What do you mean it's ready to go? It better not be ready to go. This sucker better be in pieces. No, no. We already had these parts in stock, the rocker arm, the lifters. It's ready to go. They brought the Jeep out, and I have to admit, it was quieter. In fact, I had them. This is the funny part. I said, okay, tell you what, let's do this. Let's take another 2014 Jeep off the lot and put them side by side. They do. They take a one of their dealer vehicles that they use. It's a 2014 and put them side by side. Guess what? 
the 2014 has a slight tick to it as well. So of course, when you put mine, which is a little quieter beside the one that does have a slight tick, you really can't even tell much of a difference. The guy at Big O Dodge says, oh, sounds like they're both ticking. This is one of the sales guys off the floor. Without further ado, let me go ahead and show you what it sounds like. Oh, sorry, wrong car. I was starting the Mustang. Wishful thinking, right? So what does it all mean? Quite honestly, I don't think the problem has been fixed. Here is the work order of all the work that they did do to the Jeep. In some cases, it's louder at times, and other times it's quieter, so who knows? I'll go ahead and wait till after the July 4th weekend and go ahead and send it back to the dealership, and then hopefully then it will get fixed. Thanks again for watching my videos. Click subscribe and like around here, and we'll see you soon.